that Coach Zaya is in good spirits. Coach Dale as well, a Filipino coach that joined the team maybe three or four months back, and they're doing work. So on camera, we have Zip X. Zip X. A lot of pressure on this young man's shoulders. Yeah, really a lot of pressure. And I mean, it's tough, especially since that we saw the breakout performance of Silent in particular, where he literally looked at his team in a bad situation and said, hop into my backpack, I got this. But it's time for the drafting phase, and maybe this time Zipex can prove why he deserves to be in the gold lane. All right, so here's why that conspiracy theory from earlier about the whole schedule and the siding thing is so different. Mm -hmm. It's because they still have the re relatively terms, coin flip still, because look, it's blue side, Burn next flash, but yeah. they're on the right side of uh, the stage. So now that being said, let's see if this changes the winds of the coop stage. Wait a minute, is is this an expansion of the conspiracy theory? Is it not just blue side, but the position they're sitting in on stage <laughs> to determine it? Possibly. <laughs> oh boy, it's gonna be tough. But once again, we are seeing expected bands blue. Of course, thank goodness. Please get rid of him. Uh, and also coming in from Burn next flash, the tone as well as the joy. I have mixed feelings about I, Joy. I was just, the, right? I was, I was connected to you guys here. Because big guy I'm, connection. Big guy, yeah, connection. big guy connection. And same concept, right? We were actually saying, where does Joy fit, right? And even when Yellow Flash played Joy previously, it didn't work out. So I'm surprised with the band. Yeah, no, he took a page out of Papa Dop's uh, playbook yeah. and put him in the XP lane, which is pretty solid. Again, Joy is a sustainable hero, yeah. but a retribution on her very rarely will die. But what does she do with that, yeah. right? Uh, compared to heroes that also very rarely die, like Uranus or Esmeralda, a lot of pressure there. So now, I think, I agree. Gideon, you said this maybe a few moments ago. Mm -hmm. They're gonna keep it close to the chest. Nothing too crazy here, because they're both playing with you know, less than ideal circumstances, right? Falcon already lost their first game. Yep. Uh, Burn X Flash making their debut here. A lot of pressure on them, too. Mm -hmm. So now with the 1-1 ban, it's very clear that both teams respect the gold lane. Are we going to be expecting here um, be a possible... Experience? Could be, could be. Because, again, I expect Hessa, Hessa plays Hessa. a mean Beatrix. He does. He does. And honestly, when I'm looking at the band so far, the fact that they banned out Joy for the side of Burn X Flash, I'm guessing they want to play a composition very orientated towards CC. I'm not sure if it's split push or team fight. I'm feeling more team fight oriented as Valentina gets banned for the side of Falcon. Let's see what this first pick is going to be. I'm also thinking, you know, if you're going to give Ccat uh, C Cat something here, Farsa has been doing work so far in day one, mm -hmm. right? Um, and that could be a possibility, but then you're left with this decision. What do you want to prioritize? And it's going to be yes. a Fanny here, who we've oh. constantly seen banned out for the majority of the day. Absolutely. And teams in Southeast Asia love the Fanny. At least somebody on the team has one trickster for a good amount of time to be able to whip it out on the professional stage. Something tells me it's uh, some rite of passage. Mm -hmm. Just get those cables in. It's like the jungler minimum. Yeah. <laughs> Do you play yeah. Fanny? Yes? Okay, your part. All right, let's go to the boot camp. <laughs> let's go right. to the boot camp. Faram is pick up here for Falcon, and I'm guessing they're going to combo this with something from the EXP or something for Rome. Uh, I would think they would hold off on the Rome for a little bit here. You want to still have that flexibility of throwing the Faramis into the Rome or maybe into the mid lane. So the Lapu Lapu, I think, generally quite safe here. He has a couple of bad matchups, but at the end of the day, still brings a lot of value in team fights. I, again, I think that's why they took out the glue, uh, you know, because that's usually the answer for Lapu Lapu. They, you see a lot of glue played into that lane. They're going to secure themselves that here. I'm wondering if they trade the Fredrin, right? If we see Burn X Flash take the Fredrin and put it in the XP lane, because that is kind of the old eternal battle, right? With the uh, Uranus as we're on the fight. It's now it's now like Fredrin, <laughs> Lapu Lapu. I. I don't know. I personally don't think that matchup is too favorable. Honestly, there's no leeway for either side. You want a very clear, distinct advantage here. And I think if they want to do that, I mean, Uranus is still a very good option considering that Burnex Flash has already locked in one of its natural counters in the carry, and not to mention, pairs very, very well with the Eve. I'm liking what Burnex Flash is doing. This is non fundamental in the fact that they've picked all their damage in the first phase. But regardless, what this allows them to do is to just play around what's left. Mm -hmm. Regardless if Falcon bans out solid roamers or uh, solid peel in the XP lane, they don't mind because this is their core already. Ooh. This is daring. 
Yeah. It's dangerous. Yeah. Ling. Uh, perilous. Perilous. Ooh. Ling versus Fanny. Again, another very classic matchup, but you can expect the Fanny to have a lot more pressure in that early game. I'm surprised they locked in their jungle, especially in the first phase. They banned out, for specifically Falcon, they banned out the Kaja. I was thinking maybe a Kufra, an answer maybe yeah. to stop this Fanny, well, which burn next flash just banned. It looks like Falcon doesn't want to play the, I'm going to play this, so I'll ban this role. It's more of, I'll play this so that you have no choice but to answer me because they took out one of the last remaining predators of the Ling, the Hilda. Mm, that's a good point. Oh, it, it's getting a bit stressful here because it feels like Falcon might be playing into themselves. I, I, look, we don't have the Kufra. We yeah. don't have the Hilda. I'm very curious if Falcon, I'm going back to like prehistoric days here. Anybody play Saber? Oh. Yeah, like if they really want to shut him down, that's a possible answer. Mid and Rome Saber and was a thing mm. for, for quite a bit. Yep. Yeah. Legacy stuff, man. But I it's too old. spicy. Right now it's too spicy for, for 2023. Too spicy? <laughs> I feel like it's just right. Like just right. I mean the diggy is already gone. Like, um, I'm I'm feeling it here. It feels like it's gonna come out. I think I could I mean it, with it being day one, mm -hmm. I don't think you can count out spicy, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, especially where we're here in beautiful Indonesia, right? So or it's all some, about the some ball everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> some ball everywhere. Oh boy! All right, here we go. With ten seconds left on the clock, let's see the final ban coming out for Burn X Flash. Ah, uh, what else could they really be worried for? I feel like their first three picks are already so very good. The Ruby, that another Roamer. Yeah, that yeah. is a really, really good ban. I love it. No, the Ruby just stops whatever the Ling wants to do, whatever the Lapu wants to do, positions him and then repositions him. Even the Faramis, the Ruby can give hell to the Faramis. I would have I would actually loved to see Ruby here on the side for Burn X Flash, especially with that Eve, but uh, you know, they, they're the one that banned that out here, but Brock locked in for Falcon. And this could be a good tool for them to work around, right? I mean, you have that long stun with a wild charge. You have, obviously, those those walls you can set up here mm -hmm. to cause a little havoc. Try to cut some people off if you can, too, and make it a little bit harder for that Fanny to move around. For sure. But at least it gives another threat to actually cancel out uh, the Eve's real world manipulation. Yeah. You can use the Guardian's Bulwark as a way to kind of knock her, knock her. Or if you want full commitment with the Lapu Lapu as well, the wild charge really sets up great. But it also is a bit of a double-edged sword, right? You build up that wall. You still need a whole spells specifically for Fanny. Yeah, no, that's what's happening is uh, Burnex Flash, regardless of what happens with these last two picks, are playing with their box. Yeah. They're the mm -hmm. ones who want to poke, and then it's up to Falcon oh, to try to break so through smart. with that. And they're going with a... Correct me if I'm wrong, this is a Rome Matilda x Lane Fredrin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So eventually ended up with the... The Fredrin the Lapu, Lapu. new Im The new Eternal Battle. Yeah. <laughs> you eternal battle. I mean, it's eternal more like a flashy two. battle. Like, it looks like an action movie. Like, eternal battle to Electric Boogaloo. Yes, we'll take uh -huh. it. <laughs> I'm with it. In theaters near, near you. I'm with <laughs> it. I hate the fact that I know the reference, and it tickles me every time. Coming but I gotta, soon. I got to keep my composure here. I got to be one of the big boys at the table. But with the final pick coming in for the side of Falcon, is there anything that could really save them here? They lock it. The Harith. Oh, Golden Harith. Golden Harith. Harith. This is going to be very interesting here, and it's going to be a little tough for at least Hessa to farm comfortably. I was just saying, like, with when we had the discussions about the meta and everything, like, gold lane, yes, you still have your marksmen, they're great options, but I feel like now more than ever, maybe more than ever, you can actually flex a lot of those picks, even the mage picks, in that gold lane. And if we've even seen in previous tournaments, even, like, a ruby gold lane, a hellkirk gold lane pop up. Not sure if that's going to happen, but even you mentioned a possibility of, hey, what if Hayabusa gold lane, right? There's, mm -hmm. there's, I feel like, room for flexibility just in that lane alone. Yeah, so, so thinking about how Falcon might approach this matchup is the Harith is one of the heroes that aren't built to break through that zone, that box mm -hmm. that Burnix Flash is putting up because they need that. They, yes. they need at least one failsafe, one emergency button for them to eventually rely on if, if the Ling plan to work out. Well, at the very least, they have ways to stop the box. Five but let's jump right into it. Welcome the to the Land of Smash. Dawn once again for match number five. It is going to be Burn X Flash on the blue side up against Falcon Esports on the red. Something to note, something to note. Falcon already uh, applying here. One of the few things that a Grok only can do, made popular by M2 World Champion Lusty with the minion block. Yep, right? Delaying that wave. Yeah, right there. See, and, and already, 
Justin is getting a lot of waves. Yeah, no, it, it's great because now Justin can sit under his turret. Wait, this is about to escalate. Oh. Hold up. They're going to cut him off here. D7 has to flicker out. Going to be fine right now, but a lot of tension here between the two teams already early on. Yeah, thank goodness Chima was ready to go for it. And most, I, I mean, if this was a pup game, Chima would have just left <laughs> me to die. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> but yes, more importantly, the mid lane is going to be highly contested here just so that the side lanes could have a good time. A lot of the pressure is going to be topsy turvy here. We're on a seesaw. Let's see where the weight is going to be put on. Wait, did Ken not get the purple? He yeah, he did. Oh, he didn't go for the purple yet. You're right. You are right. That's ki ooh, that's kind of brutal uh. here. Ken doesn't have his purple just yet. He's making his way back to go pick okay. it up here. So okay. He remembered. He remembered. He remembered. He still got. I the left it in the jungle. <laughs> yeah, I left it in the jungle. I'll be back <laughs> did for I? later. Did oh. I? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well placed wall there, Naomi. Going to allow Ken to go ahead and get the purple buff, but Chima going to try to cause a little havoc oh. here. Looks like it was got secured, it. though, okay. by Ken. So, yeah, interesting, right? Interesting decision to just leave that towards the end. I think it's smart because Falcon was expecting potential invades, especially when you have D7. He took the Avarice, and that's when you know, oh, hey, Matilda wants to harass me, wants to get some early gold. Yeah, no, and the way that Matilda was... Uh adjusted in the last patch. Mm -hmm. She's more of a killer now. Like, if you hit somebody with the uh, Circling Eagle, they are more likely to prioritize the hit with the Wisps. Mm -hmm. Wait, I see. He, he waited for that purple buff so he could time it with this first turtle. Correct. Right? The whole rotation there. So this should just be, yeah, turtle going in the hands of Ken. So that was a good call in yeah. the long term of things with that first turtle. Yep, yeah, this is a, a variety of uh, the rotation that was made popular by MSC 2022 champions, RSGPH. Mm -hmm. Yep. Really, really smart place coming out from Falcon. Really understanding and taking it a step further here because you can see that even with Shima down by his uh, by, down by his purple buff, he knows he can't really contest it. Not expecting this timing to go through. And what this is doing for Burn is it's throwing them off. Do you see how Shima could not even think of even going to the turtle anymore? Mm -hmm. And yeah. they can't even. It's not like they even made much of it in the top lane. So this is also again in turn giving Zipex some space. Yeah, super balanced right now. Naomi, he's pretty far out, and I like what he's doing. He is just matching and mirroring what D7 is doing right now, making sure that they know where Burn is going to try and invest some time and effort to maybe get an advantage, maybe get a little bit of a lead. But Falcon understands the longer this game goes, there is a very high chance for them to actually go for a full-on fight. Yeah, I think they have, I mean, especially when you have a Faramis on your side, you're in the hands of Justin. Also, running that last worship, the poke there is great, but also that the ultimate, right? I mean, that's why you usually pick them. You have that cult altar available to you. So, team fight wise they do have that possible advantage, but still, with no one going down just yet, this is, again, not we're not familiar, right, with this. For yes. Almost four minutes in, there's been no first mm -hmm. blood just yet. It's very interesting with the compositions they both drafted as well. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Naomi, though, going to take the shots here. Whoa, He's going to flicker what? in. He's going to wild charge in the wrong direction, though. Ken, though, able to grab D7. And they find another one as well as Hessa falls here. Whoa, okay, that was about to be bad. Naomi whiffing the ultimate there. But at least they find a trade back. Not worth it. They lost Hessa mm -hmm. in the process. And that was one of the most ideal ways that Falcon can actually initiate. Yes, it was tricky for Naomi, but he knew what he was doing. I'm pretty sure comms would show that he was getting in there in the right time. And it allowed Ken to make a beeline for the back line. And he did, I don't even think it was uh, Ken who finished off Hessa. He finished off D7, and this allows another free turtle. So now they're going for it. Certainly he's going to be popped here. Ken able to secure the turtle, but Zip goes down as Chima able to find the kill. Another wild charge comes forth as D7 oh. falls. Tempest Blade's going to be popped here. Ken looking for Hessa. Can't oh. get the last hit though as he falls into the river and it's I'm your ATM to secure another one beautifully played by burn beautifully played they all had their battle spells ready to go those flickers making all the difference here in these small moments moment to moments against Falcon and here's how that Matilda pick alongside the Eve on the sea cat makes a difference mm -hmm. with this kind of lineup yes you're playing with the box 
but since it is a Matilda with the Guiding Wind, you're able to relocate, and that's what allowed Burn to win that exchange. Yeah, and now the item power spikes are starting to roll in here, right? CK getting the Ice Queen's wand, he's got a little bit more utility, even Hesa. Uh, he's getting close to that second item. He, I know for a fact that he already has the Corrosive Scythe, and yes, he's already starting to build up into that Golden Staff, I would assume. Oh, I love it. The Ice Queen wand on the Eve is going to make finding him all the more difficult. Uh, first pick up on the Enchantless Talisman on Justin. Yeah, he's gonna be able to use uh, Cult Altar even more. Uh, Bloodless Axe first build up on the Yellow Flash. What's gonna happen to Naomi? Oh, Naomi's gonna be in trouble here. That's what's gonna happen as he falls to Chima. Can the team of Falcon back him up? Hessa gonna be the focus. Temps Blade's gonna come down. It's Yellow Flash to grab the kill. Can they grab another one? They're slowed in the Ooh. real world manipulation. They get the flicker out from D7, but I'm your ATM here to zone them out. Out, but Jima still gonna go into the backside, focusing on Zip. Can't get him though, and they disengage for now. It's really interesting when you're looking at the thought process of Burnex Flash. Like, yes, we've already lost the guy, but still they wanted to get something back. It may not be a kill, they are getting battle spells. Now Yellow Flash can't go for these big flashy plays flickering into the middle of the fight. And more importantly, Zipex is actually having a pretty good time against Hessa. The Calamity Reaper just being more valuable in comparison to a Corrosive Scythe at this stage of the game. Now you're gonna think what happens if this continues for the next five minutes, right? So far, Falcon has scored 100% of the Turtles and the only clapbacks that Burn have are when Falcon has no battle spells or when the ults come up wrong uh, off of Falcon. So it's a matter of timing. If this happens for the next five minutes all the more, Hess is gonna have a hard time. Yeah, this one goes in the hands of Ken again. A clean sweep on the Turtles. And it's Chima that falls to Yellow Flash. Seacat, though, with the box of death. Oh, oh they're gonna kill a Tessa, though, that finds a Zip. Can they turn it around? They're gonna focus on Justin as he has to flick her out, but he's not gonna be able to get away as Hessa grabs another one. And D7 and CC Cat Run, are on flash. the hunt for Yellow Flash. Going oh. to the hands of Seacat. Oh boy, that's unfortunate there. But again, we are now starting to see why people are like, hey, Hessa, he's just gonna carry. Don't worry, yeah. he's got he's got it. Because Falcon had a really good opportunity to turn, but Matilda ready to pull him out just in case. So here's one of those moments where in, yes, Falcon got the turtle, but as long as you can protect Hessa, as long as oh. Burn gets a winning trade, the next five minutes are gonna look better for the Khmer. Yo, I thought Castle Crest was about to click right now. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It was about to look bad, but I can see the confidence in Leo's eyes. His team has got him covered. The question is, when do we expect Zipex to actually come online? Well, looking at Zipex, uh, one, two, and four, Mystery Shop obviously is gonna help him, but oh! Oh, Chima Force forcing out. out the Colt Altar. Oh, wow. Well, Zipex, again, back to the story, he hasn't really left the gold lane. He's been here for the better part of the last, what, six, seven minutes? He rotated in mid, and another look at that team fight, right? Seacat just swiping away, clicking away. You can adjust real world manipulation as much as possible, but that's not really it. It's all about Hessa, all about D7. Allowing again to relocate and reposition to give Falcon hell. And yes, Falcon Whoa. is ahead, maybe a small amount, 200, but look, down bottom. Ho oh. ho! Ken's gonna go in with the Temps of Blaze. Naomi able to find the connection on D7, but look at the backside! Justin falls to Chima! They didn't have the rise on the back. And they get unleashed on, and now Zip there to try to help him out. But I think this is gonna dis disengage for now. Essa apparently died earlier in the fight, so it's still a one for two trade, and in the end of the day, Burn is still gonna have a slight, very slight net profit here. However, mid turret under fire. Oh, Naomi's gonna be in trouble here. Chima on the hunt with the high and dry. Can't get the kill, though. So it's Falcon that's still able to hold on to that tier one in the mid lane. Oh, yep. thank goodness. That mid tier one is so very important here because Ken, once that mid tier one is gone, Purple Buff might be up for contestant for Burn. Oh, oh. be fighting for this Lord here. Yellow Flash gonna be a little bit too late to the party. Chima able to secure it. <laughs> Ken from the back looking for Seacat. That's gonna be the focus there, but it's Yellow Flash that falls here. Ken able to grab a kill. Zip X with the flicker out. Hessa guiding wins out. I'm your ATM falls though. And Ken with the double. Double kill. Tempest of Blade's gonna be popped here. D7 though. They're bouncing oh. <laughs> between the tier one. Purple buff gonna be up here. Ken's gotta be careful. Naomi, the battle for the purple buff. Chima oh. able to escape. Oh. No, sir. He can't as he falls there in the tier two.
You can see the Falcon fans just jump for a moment thinking that, yes, they stole it. Wait, they did it, but they got the kill, and that's when you expect the jump. So once again, Falcon now actually having a very clear advantage against Burn. It may be very small for now, but this could really start the snowball for Falcon, which we've been waiting for 10 minutes into the game. No Lauren, whatever. You don't have a team to protect it. We'll cut down these Lord Empowered minions and continue on chugging forward. Burn's not going to make the most of this Lord. Again, it's a free defense, 2K ahead. I would expect that in a fight that happens much like the last one that that transpired, right? If it's scrappy, a lineup like Burn is actually more favored. But given how Falcon is so good at positioning and finding yeah. angles, Ken coming in just the last minute, Zip X as well holding down uh, that ult before he unleashes it. It's so perfect, and that's what's leading Falcon here so far to get this small lead. Again, 13 to 11. Lord went over to Burn, but it's Falcon who's winning more fights. I'm very curious about the item build so far. I, I just saw Hessa purchase the Winds of Nature. I'm not entirely sure but, uh, whether he has the Golden Staff already or whether he's delaying it. We'll find out in a little bit as this fight might just break out. No, they're going to just back off. Regardless, it's more important that he picks up uh, the Wind of Nature yeah. before anything else at this point mm -hmm. because Ken is so good at finding him. It's, it's mostly for Ken, almost just for Ken. Oh. Yeah, there's still, I mean, a lot of back and forth here. I'm your AT. I'm going to get the taunt off. Has to be careful how they go about this. Oh. Zip, though, with the Zaman Force oh, Ken? right into the Wind of Okay, they're going to be fine, actually, as they back off from that rear one minute blade from the Tempest of Blades popped as well. That's so many ultimates expended here by both teams. Ooh, that, that can't be right. Yeah. That cannot be right. I think Falcon had a really big miscommunication. There, there is a moment of hesitation. Yeah. You can see that Ken is in really good position to actually use the Tempest of Blades early enough to actually cancel out Seacat's ultimate, but then at the rest of, at the expense of Falcon's team getting cut down, and even with a call Altar being expanded early, just Something cut through. tells me it's analysis paralysis. He had to make a decision. Do I find the Seacat, try to cancel that ult and kill him, or give Hessa what he's looking for? And they reposition Hessa. I think Burn knows that that's what Falcon wants. They can keep doing that. I love the term analysis paralysis. paralysis. That then, is a good term. And on a Ling, you can't have that. You have to have fast <laughs> fingers and fast decisions, and that's what happened. Yeah, that, that would be ideal, but with, without the purple buff, it can be a bit tough here. Now, the Lord has spawned. It's already empowered at the same time. Yellow Flash actually picking up an Oracle for himself to try to protect it, but look at the side lanes. It's really starting to even up. Man, and, and you got to say, too, I mean, Ken has done a much better job this game than the previous one, and I feel like, you know, even on the same hero, and they're both both junglers just hanging down on the bottom side, trying to handle those waves while they can. The rest of the team, though, pretty much working around this Lord. Again, oh. they have the tools they need for it. Do they have eyes on Naomi? Because look, Naomi can just ruin oh, Burn here. He's going to the back side, oh! goes in with the conceal, looking for that wild charge, goes in with the flicker. They find Hessa. The Tempest of Blade's gonna be popped. That's the wind of nature popped. It's Sea Cat that falls under the tier two. Another flicker gonna come out here. The guiding one, Chima from the backside, decides not to go in. It's only Sea Cat that falls but it's going to be a purple buff as well, taken from Falcon. Really beautifully done coming in from Falcon to get the cancel, but now Burn looking for trades. Oh, oh Chima win in, but not able to grab it. Quite low here for Falcon, but they might give it a go as Ken's working on the Lord. Circling Eagle will come out, but that is Zip. Able to punish D7, Lord secured as well. Oh. Naomi still standing oh. for a little bit longer. Finally going to fall here, but it's a three for one trade for now. Lord secured by Falcon. They had to cut their losses there. They had to. I mean, even Shima, he goes and tries to steal the, his own purple buff away. Doesn't get it. That's why you call it quits. The Lord is coming. And you cannot afford to have members down while this push is happening. It just means that Falcon are pretty much going to get all the outer tier turrets. It's a miserable spot to be here where it's your own purple and you have to steal it. So that was a clear win for Falcon. And right now, the best that Burn can do is hope and pray. Defend within your own base. Oh, they get the real world manipulation down here. They're just going to disengage for now. So far, I mean, Falcon just happy with a couple objectives that they grabbed for themselves with that Lord. Uh, oh. I feel like they could get a little bit more here, but I think it's safer for Falcon not to press the advantage yeah. here for now. Hey, They're the still poking Wait. away here. Zip. No, they wouldn't, they would, right? Watch I mean, they out. got another way of coming. Yeah, they're taking it slow, taking it chill. They're going to grab this turret as they work on the inhibitor one. They have all the ultimates they need. 
Turret goes down to the top side. Yellow oh. flash quite low. He's too slow, though. And Seacat able to grab a kill. Chima goes in. Immortality going to be popped here. The follow-up, oh. though, as Zip grabs the kill. He's on a killing spree at this point. It looks like Bird X Flash still on the hunt here. They know they want to protect this purple buff, but without Chimo, what's the point? No. Seacat, no. Naomi getting poked down, still has immortality. D7 to back off for now. It's Ken that grabbed it. And another buff stolen away from Chima. I get it. The decision uh, for Burn to overextend was just a response to Falcon saying, there's no more real world manipulation. There's very little here to punish us. Yes, they got the kill on Yellow Flash, but Chima went down. Again, very clearly, Naomi helped there. Great use of the Guardian's Barrier. Let's not forget, if you look at the items so far, this effect's at full build already. We look at Carrie, she's getting very, very close, but her main core items have been completed. Now, coming down to the tanks here, we're noticing immediately, hey, D7, he's not going for full damage. He needs to make sure he stays alive so he can be the extending arm for Burn X Flash to press an advantage or to pull away. Not just, they're using D7 as vision. They need to be able to tell where at least Naomi or Ken is one or the other. If you don't see both come in, that's lethal. The Falcon is going to land. I repeat, the Falcon is going to land. Falcon incoming. Falcon incoming. 30 seconds on the clock, though, for the upcoming Lord. This is going to be a really big objective because now the goal lead generally doesn't matter too much. But yeah. Falcon just have one extra situational item. I think the other, not only that, but Falcon also, so far throughout this game, has done a very good job at utilizing Naomi with the conceal, that wild charge, right? And the misplacement that he's, actually the displacement that yeah. he's doing for Burn X Splash with that Guardian Barrier. I think those are two key things that's happening here. And now that this next Lord is up, this is gonna be crucial for Burn X Flash to do their best to get in to a objective-based fight for them, but they're gonna lose another purple yep. buff here from Chima. It's difficult. On the contrary, I'd like to say that items still matter at this point because even Hessa, a perfectly built carry in the late, late, late game would let go of the boots. You, you could save that for something else, to, to, to save your hide and then get more damage output in. That MDK. is a good point. Yes. No the, boots carry. No yeah. boots carry. <laughs> yeah. Now with the upcoming Lord here, this is going to be a really big objective. But with no purple buff on Shima, are they even going to try? Well, I mean, it's the four on four right now, right? Both junglers kind of just hanging out. They Ken, Naomi. Yeah, oh, Ken's going to be fine though. They're oh. still working on it. I'm not. I'm your ATM. Going to have to be careful. Real world manipulation going to come down. Colt Alter there too. D7 immortality going to be popped. Naomi though, Hessa was trying to do his best to zone him out. They got to deal with oh. Hessa as well. They're still bobbing and weaving. Ken, though, oh. he's going to fall from Seacat. Huge mistake here. Now Falcon on the retreat as the Lord might just go in the hands of Burn X Flash. Zip X, though, no one there to contest this one. It's looking rough for Falcon as this Lord continues to be whittled down here by Burn X Flash. Another flicker going to go out. Yellow Flash oh. falls, though. I'm your ATM with another pickup. And just like that, Burn X Flash back in this game. Highway robbery. I'm calling highway robbery. That was clearly Falcon's oh. Lord. But the way that Burn responded, they're not done. Oh. Oh, they're still going back and forth here. But this looks like the disengage call from Burn X Flash. They're going to go ahead and reset and march down with the Lord. Man, both of these teams not really giving each other an inch. And Ken, unfortunately, making... Well, I, I can't even blame him. It's not really that no, his no, no, fault. No, no. It's yeah. Seacat's great timing exactly. on the uh, the resurrect. When as soon as the immortality pops, yeah. it's just boom. Anal gone. Analysis paralysis, part two electric boogaloo again. <laughs> it's that same situation, right? So what do I do? Do I stop the Eve? Do I find where Hesa is? Because Naomi already pulled the ult. He already did the flicker uh, wild, wild charge, charge right? Yeah. So what do I do next? Well, right now, it, it has to be defense right now. Seacat is pulling this for the team. That box is deadly. And Falcon have to respect it, or at least stop it as early as possible. Well, right now, they're going to lose their tier two here. Now it's Falcon on the defense. Ken, Ken with Tempest of Blades. There's a follow-up there, Chima. Just barely as Ken's able to survive here. It's Falcon fighting for their lives. I'm your AT. I'm going to get pulled a little bit, but quite tanky now on this Fredgen as another turret falls here. Falcon oh. has to defend their base. They've already lost the bottom side. They could possibly lose the top one as well. Oh. Naomi goes in with the wild charge. Real world manipulation able to find all the targets they need, but it's Justin that grabs the oh. kill. Oh. He's still going to be alive. Three fall for Burn X Flash. Justin has to be careful here, but it's Chima and D7 on the run. Oh, that was such a bad 
that all coming in from Zipex. He got so much value out of it. Even actually seeing when, when you see Ken jumping into the back lines, less hesitation this time, forcing Seacat to actually get out of there and using the Winter Truncheon super early on into the fight. It's come to the point where Falcon's box is so much bigger than Burn. Oh. And it's so oh, much easier no. to activate. Chima There's goes the down. Payback. That's about it. That's oh. going to be it right here as they focus on this mid lane turret. No. Falcon looking to end the game. It's only D7 for now. Falcon Esports looking to take the first game for themselves in day one as they work on the base and take the game. Oh my goodness. And just like that, it's Falcon Esports putting themselves on the board. Congratulations. The Falcon has landed, folks. The Falcon has landed. This is what we were waiting to see. Yeah. I would, I honestly, I feel like this is one of the, so far from day one, one of the closest games we've had. I mean, in a way, one of the closest and scrappiest games, both in the same best of one. Yeah. We were talking about how the first five minutes were very mum. Yeah. And then as soon as the ults came up and both teams had an idea of what